I want you to think about science for a moment. And a particular science I'd like you to think about is chemistry. Now, does anyone know what chemistry is the science of? Like, physics is the science of moving objects. What's chemistry the science of? Mikhail. Chemicals and chemical reactions. Very good. So it's like stuff. Like, what is stuff made of? That's chemicals. And how does stuff, like, interact with each other? That's chemical reactions. Okay? Yes, Aiden. Um, atoms? Yeah, very good. So we then learn a whole bunch of different terminology about chemistry. And I'm going to call your mind back to two of them. Okay? Um, you may or may not have met them, but I'm going to quickly explain you know what they are, even if you don't know the word. So in chemistry, we have... Um, when we talked about chemicals and, and stuff, right, there are two really important categories of stuff. The, the two categories are, I need some colours, elements and when you put a whole bunch of elements together, you get, does anyone know what the word is? It starts with C. Does anyone know? Maybe you haven't met this yet. It's okay. I'm going to introduce it to you. You have elements and compounds. Okay. Now, if you've not met these words before, that's fine. I think you know what all of these actually are. You know a whole bunch of examples. Um, let me write some for you. So, elements are things like oxygen, or carbon, or hydrogen. Right? So, we've, we've heard all these words before, even if we're not super familiar and don't know a whole lot about them just yet. But I promise you will. It's really exciting to learn about these things and what they do. These are things that we call elements. They're all on the periodic table. Everything on the periodic table is one of these. But if you take some of these and combine them together, you get things called compounds. Okay? So um, compounds that we're very familiar with are things like water. Water is a compound of some of the elements that I've already actually written on the board. Does anyone know which elements they are? They're quite famous. Yeah, Nikhil. Two atoms of hydrogen, one atom of oxygen. Very good. We write it as H2O. Two hydrogens and an oxygen, you sort of wham them together, you get a big fat molecule, and we call that thing, that whole thing, we call it water. Right? Now there's lots of other kinds of compounds like that, some that you're very familiar with. For example, when you're cooking, and you go reach for the counter, and you get the table salt, and you pour out all that white grainy stuff, right? It is a compound of two elements. Does anyone know what the two elements are? Someone hasn't mentioned anything yet? It's funny, they have um, funny symbols. You want to go ahead? Mm -hmm. Well, it's um, like something like. Um, that's cool. It's cool. I, I will write down. I will write down what the two elements are. You will learn lots about these later. It's not my main point today. Um, the two elements are sodium yeah. and chloride. Um, sodium has an A. There's a reason for that. There's a story behind every element <coughs> and its name and its symbol. But um, my point is that table salt, just the stuff that makes your food taste good, it's made up of some of these things. Okay. Um, there's one last common example that I want to talk about, uh, which is that the stuff that we breathe in is mostly oxygen, nitrogen, a few other things. But up above where we are, like way, way above, there's a particular layer of a compound which protects us from UV radiation. Does anyone know what that layer is called that's around the entire... It starts with an O. Yeah, The ozone layer? The ozone layer, very good. Ozone, ozone is a compound. It's what happens when you take not one, not two, but three oxygens and you wham them together. So because it's three, we write O3. Okay? I should write dot dot dot. Because there's lots more compounds. And dot dot dot. There are lots more elements. Okay? So let me just review this idea that this is the stuff that the universe is made of. Okay? And you can put together this stuff in different ways. You can combine them a bit like Lego. You can fit it together in different um, configurations and setups. Okay? That's in chemistry. In mathematics, we have a similar kind of idea that the stuff of mathematics is, well, it's not only, but a lot of it is numbers, right? We do lots of work with numbers, okay? And we talk about, just like stuff, right? We talk about two categories of numbers. And here are the two categories. I need my two colors again. The two categories are called primes. And this name sounds very similar to the name we just wrote down. If they're not primes, they're called composites. Now, I'm drawing this parallel, and I'm even showing it in the colors, in, um, for a very good reason. Okay? Um, so primes are numbers, and I'm going to write down this definition in a second, um, but I'm going to give you some examples first. Primes are numbers that are hard to split up. Okay? Do you remember, um, yesterday we were going through the diagnosis test, right? 
Do you remember we talked about a class with 31 students in it? Do you remember that? Yeah. 31 students? Now, 31 is a prime number because you can't divide it up into groups neatly. You've always got something left over. Do you remember? We divided into fives. There was a guy left over. We divided into threes. Guy left over. And so on and so on. Yes? Um, do we like write down the um, chemistry and Yeah, 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 have the whole thing together, okay? If it's on the board, it should be in your book. So 31 is what we call a prime number, because when you divide it, you always get something left over. You always get a remainder, okay? So prime numbers that you might be more familiar with, we'll look at the small ones. The, um, the first four primes are 2, 3, 5, and 7, right? These are numbers where if you're, um, if you're trying to divide up into even teams, um, you know, two teams or three teams or four teams, if you've got these numbers, you're, you're kind of stuck, right? Like you can't divide it up into um, a nice neat thing. You'll always get some kind of remainder, okay? Composites, on the other hand, you can divide up, right? You can get them into a whole bunch of even groups. So I'll just give you the first few composite numbers. Uh, the first few are 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, and they go on from there, okay? Now the important thing is, in exactly the same way that I can write a compound in terms of which elements are in it. You see that? It's like look, there's a compound and it's made up of two hydrogens and an oxygen. There's another compound made up of three oxygens. For every composite number, you can write the primes that go in. That's how you know that it's going to be a composite and not a prime. For instance, uh, if I tried to take four, I could divide that up into a couple of groups, right? It would be 2 times 2. Do you agree with that? So this is kind of like the equivalent of this. It's like these are the prime numbers that make up 4, okay? Um, 6, how would I write that? What prime numbers go in to 6? Uh, yeah, three. 3 and what's the other one? 2, right? How about 8? What prime numbers go into there? Yeah, right. 4. Okay, I can do four, right? But four is not a prime number, is it? Right? I can go further than four. What's smaller than four that can divide into that? Um, yeah, Nikhil. Two cubed. Okay, I can do two, then I can do two, and then I can do it again. It's two times two times two. So this is a little bit like, this is kind of like ozone, you see? It's like three oxygens together will give you ozone, three twos together will give you eight. And I can keep going, okay? Question? Why don't you write the two times two? Yeah, you should, if it's on the board, it should be in your book, okay? Now, um, rather than just go by example, I want to give you um, a rule that kind of encapsulates all of this together. Um, rules are not because we want to give you lots of things to memorize, but because there's a pattern here. And if you understand what the pattern is, it's a lot quicker. So primes are numbers with exactly two, and I'm going to say this word here, factors, right? What's a factor? These are factors. These things here, numbers you can divide by, right? So these are numbers which I can divide by two, and there's, for example, two, I can divide by two. What's the other number I can divide this by? Yeah, Millie. Oh, I'm trying to divide two. I want numbers that are smaller than that, right? Christian, what do you reckon? One. one. I can divide this by two. I can divide it by one. Three. What can I divide that by? I can divide it by, yeah, Beth. Three and one. Three and one. Five and one. Seven and one. You're sort of getting the, the pattern, right? So I'm looking for exactly two factors. For composites, these are numbers not with two factors, but with more factors, right? Numbers with more than two factors. So for example, going back to four, right? Uh, what numbers can I divide four by? It's not just one and four. I can divide by two, so it's got three factors. How about six? We did this in the diagnostic. What are the factors of six? You can divide by, yeah, if I'm not. Three, two, and then of course, one and six. I've got four factors. Do you see that? So if I can divide by more than two, I'll get a composite. Really? So with prime numbers, you always, you always can, can only find them by itself and one. Correct. That's right. However, I haven't written that as my definition for this whole thing because there's one guy, which you might notice is kind of a bit lonely and not included in this at all. There's a single number that doesn't have two factors and it doesn't have more than two factors. In fact, it has less than two factors, and there's only one of him. Does anyone know what it is? Yeah, Darcy. One. 
It's one, right? Uh, I can't divide one by anything except for itself. It doesn't have two, it doesn't have more than two. So one, one um, has only one factor. One. Right? So it's poor lonely one. I suppose it's one, so it's just one. You know? It is neither prime nor composite. It's neither of those. Okay? So it is neither prime nor composite. Okay? So of the numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, etc., all the way off to infinity, um, you've got 1, which is kind of this special weirdo, and then everything else is either prime or composite. Just like all the stuff in the world is either an element or a compound. Okay? Fantastic. So now we're going to start by understanding and the stuff that we can do with these numbers, primes and composites, is amazing. This is just the beginning. So our heading is primes and composites. Now I can tell you what the heading is. And if you were to open up to the exercise, the first thing we want to do is just be able to sort out what is a number. Is it prime or is it composite? Okay, true. Mm -hmm. I can't really see it's a bit glary. Really Let me read that for you. One has only one factor. So it is neither prime nor composite. It's just kind of out of the room as an exception. 